So what we're going to do now is to really dig into the context of this moment, is we're going to bring some other people out here, some brilliant luminaries that can really explain the technology behind what we're trying to work with as creators. Let's welcome up our wonderful panelists. All right. How are we feeling? Good. Fantastic. Good. Nice. So good. All right. Well, we got you a bigger couch this time, so you got some room. We were uh, almost going to have them sitting on each other's laps for this, but... Uh, <laughs> I would have been okay with that. We got, <laughs> yeah, we got yeah. to know each other backstage. Yeah, we've been hanging now yeah, for a we're, second. We're fast friends. So. All right. Excellent. Well, so let's, on theme with what I just shared, like, let's start with the human, right? Let's start on, on your side, Michael, if that's okay. Tell us who the human is and what brought you here to talk about technology. Uh, all right. Well, well, Delta brought me here to talk about technology. <laughs> That's um, technology. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I, um, I'm at Google. I, I work on our platforms and ecosystems team. I have the incredible privilege to work on Android marketing. Um, so obviously, really excited to be in this room. Um, I also teach at NYU uh, at a class on artificial intelligence and psychology when I'm not at Google. So yeah, we're gonna have to dive to into here. that. Yeah. Um, and I'm I actually I, I I'm a former recovering film student. That's that was my like where wow. I, that's how I went to school. So <laughs> we were just jamming backstage. Yeah, it's hard, it's hard to be in recovery. Yeah, film student. yeah exactly. <laughs> well, let's take that segue and jump over to you two over there and tell us a little bit about your stories. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm Dan Sickles. Um, I'm a filmmaker. Uh, and I, I recently just founded a new emergent media company called Depop Studios that's really focused on using new models for production and distribution of content. Uh, I'm Will. Uh, I'm a TV and film producer and creator. Um, and I collab with Dan on a couple of projects. Um, and I just think AI is such a great way for producers in particular to, in the early stages of idea creation, like at pace, move your projects forward, either um, helping a visualization of something that would normally be really expensive um, to try and find financing for. Um, but that's you know, hopefully what we'll talk more about today. Nice. And Cisco? Uh, Cisco. So I do product marketing at Qualcomm. And basically, I'm a, an evangelist. I'm just telling Mike. Uh, for all of our technologies, uh, we make a lot of chips, obviously, that powers smartphones and soon laptops. And I focus primarily on AI. Before this, uh, I used to be a tech journalist. So I was doing content creation like all of you, albeit uh, with older technology, like 12 years ago. So that, uh, that was my life. Nice. Yep. Nice. Well, let's start with you on the first question. Just to really ground here, what is possible today that was impossible yesterday for creators with this technology that this room should know about? Yeah, I think uh, the accessibility to all of this technology is, is key. Back then, uh, I would have to, I'm really dating myself here, but I used to set up a camcorder, you know, I had to point it to myself, have to click the start button to, to record, and that process plus the editing would take days and days. Now I see all of these awesome creators creating content in a matter of minutes, like with short videos. I know you guys do a lot of e editing, but uh, I think accessibility is, is the key because you have all of these different tools you have all of these different technologies, hardware technologies like camera. Yeah. Your mics are so much far, so, so much advanced. And on top of that, you, it's in a form factor that you can put in your pocket. So to me, that's, that's amazing. So Dan and Will, how's that affecting your world? This, are, are you saving time in filmmaking? Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, I think like, it, it makes the process of making a film uh, so much more flexible. It makes it easier to pivot. Um, it makes it easier to iterate sort of on any idea, right? I think like probably a, a more practical example of like the film that we're making now um, and a conversation that we've been ongoingly having is, you know, um, it's, it's me calling Will and being like, hey, so this 2D sequence that we've been working on, like what if we were to actually make it some sort of like 3D build out, mm. uh, some sort of like video game sort of look? which is a completely different build from an animator and design and VFX point of view, right? 
But if I can meet that conversation sort of like at least like 45% of the way and say like, well, this is what it can look like and this is how it can move. And here are storyboards, here's an animatic, here's maybe even like some dialogue that I've generated. Then we can like sort of like have a conversation and, and move it forward in a way that like I've never been able to do before. If that conversation happened like three years ago, it would be like, okay, well, we need to call somebody to, to figure out how we can pre-visualize all of this. It's the briefing stage. Like, you're able to have uh, conversations with other creatives, especially as a director, you need to be able to brief something that is the intent to let that work stream go be built um, while you focus on other things. And I think, especially for the creators out here, it's also just access to mediums you don't normally create with. So, like, I had an app idea I'm not a technical person, um, but I can uh, now source code, create imagery to get a pitch together to go find financing, right? All mm. without having to hire, you know, a specific person to help me visualize a specific thing. So it seems like it really broadens out that zero to one step of creativity before you get to steps one through ten. Like any idea is available to anyone. I don't. I don't think that I've fully myself reconciled the opportunity that that represents. Uh, Michael, I mean, you're, you're teaching students about this stuff. I mean, what perspective do you have on the changes that are happening right now, and especially a room full of creators? Like, how do they, you know, adapt? Yeah. I mean, I think what was just covered is, like, the profound transformation that's occurring within production and the actual creation of, of media. And certainly the barrier to entry has come down, like, uh, at an amazing level. What I find particularly exciting about the place we're in right now is just the ability to kind of transform the actual creative process itself and really like using generative AI tools and different technologies within the ideation and, and brainstorming phases um, collaboratively to prototype different ideas to explore you know, pathways that, that were kind of non-obvious early on. And so kind of that entry point and that, that, that start of the creative process and how AI is, is kind of becoming a partner within that I think is what's really exciting me. And what do you see in the next like year, two years, five years? What's, what's, what's coming? I mean, I think uh, probably the, the, the most exciting shift that I'm observing is the way that people, creatives, um, even just you know, business as usual, how we're actually working with technology and, and sort of collaborating with technology to, to get jobs done, maybe to remove the toil of some jobs that were kind of repetitive or, or could be automated. And, and maybe actually to kind of heighten our own creative capability. I think that you know, everyone um, has the ability to become a, a, you know, a really imaginative creative. They have that inside them, and this is what this technology is going to be able to bring out. Mm. Anything to add to that, Cisco? Yeah, I think, um, to Mike's point, there, there's just so much. I was, I was listening to an earlier talk by, by Drex. Uh, really good stuff, by the way. They're, they're using AI tools that a lot of folks are, are trying out today. They're, maybe they're, they're not as comfortable using, but for example, writing a blog using ChatGPT is a, is a no-brainer uh, for a lot of content creators. It definitely minimizes the time they need to spend on a, on a piece of content because the, the biggest thing for us is how do you reduce the time it takes to create a piece of time? How do you streamline mm. all of this stuff so you don't have to spend 80 hours to work 40 hour uh, weeks. But so I think where you know, the technology is there, and keep in mind, ChatGPT came into the picture only five months ago. So there's still a, a long runway from now until uh, a year, if you think about it. So, it started. Yeah. so I think the, the transcript, AI transcription there uh, is, is fascinating. Uh, we're looking at, you know, some, some person mentioned Sora, using prompts to generate video. Uh, I think the near-term stuff is, is really cool, but the long-term stuff uh, for Qualcomm, we're looking at uh, the AI assistants. You know, I think I spoke to you yesterday briefly about that and how AI can be more personal to you. Because today, if you tump, pump it, uh, input a prompt into ChatGPT, it provides a generic answer. It's not really personal to you. So how do we make it more personalized for the user so that when you ask it a question, like for example, I want to search uh, B-roll that's local to my computer or local to my uh, smartphone. How can I bring up stuff that is personal to me that I could input into the, the piece of content without having to go to the cloud to get it? I think 
that is the future where you're going to see uh, maybe not five years, maybe uh, you know, not even six years or seven years, but you're going to have an example of you know Iron Man talking to Jarvis, yeah, right? Yeah. And Jarvis will know everything about you, uh, but you don't want that information necessarily getting out to the to the open. Right. Right. Well, that's another place for right creativity, where like it, it tells us the story, so we yep. can figure out what to build against. And and some of those are are you know cautionary tales, mm -hmm. as well as some of them really being like heroes, but you know, for the reality that we're in, what are the benefits? What are the watchouts for people with this kind of stuff that's coming? Yeah, I think there's, uh, you know, you definitely have to think about the ethics of AI. You have to think about the uh, the content that that folks are putting out. How to make it so that you you own the content. I think copywriting is is super uh, important when it comes to creating content as users. Uh, the ethics of AI, we were just talking about this in the back. That's another interesting thing. So how do you make it so that uh, we're not replacing jobs, we're creating new ones? Uh, I think that's something that we should be cognizant of as well. But I, I, do, I do believe that while AI won't take over jobs, I think people who know AI or use AI, those will be the people who will be a step ahead of everyone else because Going back to what I was saying about streamlining, expediting certain things, uh, that's what AI is doing today, and that's what AI is going to be doing more of, you know, two, three years down the road. Mm. Yep. Mm. As creatives, what's your perspective here? The watchouts? I, I mean, I want to talk about the future a little bit. I just think, like, in a room full of creators, like, community is going to be really important, mm. and inviting community to collaborate, and this is what we do on one of our films, but... Um, you know, Joseph, Joseph Gordon-Levitt had a show called Hit Record, and it was crowdsourcing globally around creative. So I have a script idea. Oh, I can write it for you. I can animate it for you. I can write the song for it. And I think, like, as digital creators, like, that's such an inviting space. Um, and then the watchouts are just what stories you tell and the effects of that story. And... Um, you know, uh, you'll, you have no, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited. You know, I, I like, I suspect that like in this room or, or somebody watching is, is going to be the next person who is going to sort of single handedly be creating a, a major franchise on their parents' home computer in their basement. Right. Yeah. And like these tools enable that. And yeah. like, for me, I get tripped up knowing that like, there is a whole generation of like unvarnished talent, I think in like the producerial sense that can like now operate from a place where it's like, this is what I want to see. And then they can generate it and they can go see it. And for me, I, I grew up in a space where if I wanted to, to produce something that would require uh, aliens filling the Coliseum, <laughs> my second thought would be, well, how am I going to afford that? And yeah. for what? And now we don't have to do that. So... I'm 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 really really stoked to see like what what newer generations start to do with these tools and the stories that they tell and the access the access and exactly I, I mean that 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 brings us right around you know back to the human part again like as a as a human as somebody that is also on the receiving end of stories you know knowing that more people are going to be able to tell <clears throat> more stories what are the stories you're most looking forward to seeing told I mean, it's, it's sort of a similar answer, right? I mean, this, this requires a lot of production, you know? Um, and it requires a lot of labor from a lot of hands. And not everybody has the resources to sort of gather as we have right here and share these stories as we're doing now. And I think that, like, again, extending that access to places where it hasn't existed before, uh, to areas where they might not be able to fly in a bunch of pro lighting equipment and camera equipment right. to make a film, right. I'm very, very interested to see what those films look like coming from those spaces, you know? Great. And inspiration, like, what are you inspired by from the past that you can adapt mm. to the future? I mean, we were just talking about The Wiz backstage and like, wouldn't that be cool <laughs> to reboot and remake this year? But, but talking about like cave art to black and white film that, you know, silent black and white films that are just not consumed anymore. How can you use AI, train AI on that model, which is what you're doing with one of your projects and, and mixed mediums, right? Like, 
impressionist yeah. painting visualization to animation. But I think something to watch out for, I guess back to your question too, for creatives is that like, it's an enormous amount of power and I think that's all kind of what we're reeling from. That's what a lot of okay. uh, the fearful responses come from. That's uh -huh. what a lot of the excitement comes from. And I think what we're able to do with this tech, it's extraordinarily seductive when you're on the other end of that screen and you're like, wow, like I made this, you know? And I think it opens up a whole series of questions that we're gonna have to be really responsible about as creatives that have, have to do with personal integrity. And should I be offering attribution for this work that I created? How should I be monetizing it if I can? You know, I think that those, those are gonna be new questions that creatives, I think, need to answer, but are also best poised to answer. Beautifully said, excellent points. Let's keep moving it down the line. Cisco, what are you looking forward to seeing told story-wise or created? Yeah, I, I, gosh, there's so many different ways we can go with this, but you know, as, as a creator, I want to, I would like to see creators get their content into more hands. When I look at what AI is doing today, I think uh, Mr. Beast, for example, his, his videos are syndicated in over 50 languages. That is a, wow, that's right. that is a function of, of AI. When you can have AI syndicate the, or transcribe all of the, the videos and, and, and the text that goes with it into a different languages across the world, um, using AI to again, simplify that creation process. I think for me, what I would love to see is all of your content getting out to more eyes around the world and not just be focused on a, a one audience, for example. Nice, and Michael, final word? Yeah, I would say I think um, more diverse perspectives, more diverse stories, which I think technology access and mm -hmm. barriers being lowered will, will ultimately facilitate. I guess that's what makes me excited about it. Excellent, me too. Well, thank you all so much for sharing your perspectives, your thoughts on AI and the industry. Let's give it up for Michael, Cisco, Dan, and Will.